Listen to me, man. You have a great life in front of you. But your great life is in front of you. It's not behind you. What you did back there ain't got nothing to do with what God got for you. What you did back there was learn the lessons to get you to where you are at this particular moment right here. You can't drive your car looking in the rearview mirror. You can't. If you keep looking in the rearview mirror, you're going to keep crashing your car. There's a reason why the rearview mirror is this big and the windshield is this big. That's a reason for it. Because all the rearview mirror does is allows you to see what you've passed and to prevent what you've passed from coming up on you again. That's all the rearview mirror is for. The windshield is your future. It's where you're going. It's where you're headed. I hope you all picked up this today. And think about that, how that affects your life. If you got someone who you feel has wronged you and you carrying that, that's like a cancer. And all it's doing is eating away at you. Do you know how many people I've had to forgive that have never asked me for forgiveness? You know how many people I just let go so I could just go where God had for me? Because I just ain't have no more time to spend no more time thinking about that. Let that be a lesson to you. Look, man, if you got something that's been bothering you in your life, get past it. See, if God wakes you up in the morning, it's a sign from God that he ain't through with you yet. That's why he wakes you up. When he's done with you, you won't wake up no more. But as long as he got something for you, he keeps waking you up. Why don't you wake up to go see what that is? He done got you past whatever it was. Whatever it was that's been on you, he done really brought you through it. Because he keeps waking, you're done. Don't, 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 don't lay that, don't lay that wallowing in your past, man. Your past is back there. I would rather show the world what love do through forgiveness than sit up in here and win a damn argument. We, to a great extent, behave, think, react because of some previous experience that we've had. One of the things that we know about life is that it is always changing. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes things go real well, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes you're happy, and sometimes you're sad. Now that's that thing called life. And when we begin to understand and know that, accepting that reality that, that we will never ever have things just on an even kill all the time, that you're going to have some ups and you're going to have some downs. But during those down moments, that's where the growth takes place. That's where the work is. See, anybody can feel good when they have their health, their bills are paid, they have happy relationships, the children are acting normal, <laughs> business is successful. Anybody could be positive then. Anybody can have a larger vision then. Anybody can have faith under those kinds of circumstances. Am I correct? Yes. See, but the real challenge, the real challenge of growth, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, comes when you get knocked down. Somebody said that, that adversity introduces a man to himself or a woman. How you handle it, that's where the growth takes place. You have to take the hand you've been dealt and make the most of it. Nothing that's happened to you has stopped your destiny. That person that did you wrong, they walked away. It may have been painful, but they didn't ruin your life. They don't have that much power. If they could stop God's plan, they would be bigger than God. Don't let one bad break, one injustice, one difficult season cause you to be sour. Have a chip on your shoulder. When my father went to be with the Lord, I lost my best friend. I had worked with him day in and day out for 17 years. We'd traveled the world together. Suddenly he was gone. I was tempted to think, God, where are you? This isn't fair. Why did this happen? When we go through loss, things we don't understand, that victim mentality will always come knocking at the door. We have to make the choice. Are we going to live bitter, discouraged, thinking we're a victim of our circumstances, we're a victim of the loss, a victim of this unfair boss, a victim of this pandemic, 
Or are we going to believe that God is in control, that he's ordering our steps, that his plans for us are for good? Instead of having a victim mentality, switch over to a victor mentality. There's hope in our hearts and giving up's not an option. You and I and we, no matter what your unique situation, your storm, your struggle, your trauma, your abuse, your wounds, your scars, no matter what they are, and I know we've all got them on some way, some way, somehow, some level, whatever they are, I promise you this, you are not a product of your past, you are not a product of your environment or your current unique situation, but you are always a product of how do we navigate through our storm. What we do is what we believe. And in that moment, instead of giving up, I literally wrote the words, change the world. Literally, I wrote these words, change the world. And I slapped them and I put them on the prison wall in my cell. And I began to realize something. First and foremost, the mask that I wore that was supposed to keep me safe, it was the very thing that held me hostage and paralyzed me. And I, I wore the mask and I tried to protect and I isolated and isolating and letting nobody in. It got me to a place of brokenness. And I decided in that moment, I was done wearing that stupid mask. I was done being afraid of showing people my scars, my hurts, my pains, my wounds. And yet that's a fearful thing because I don't know what others are going to do with when I begin to talk and to communicate. But I realized what was going to happen if I continued to wear the mask, man. Nothing ever changes unless we change. The mask doesn't keep you safe. It, it holds you hostage, y'all. But you know what I also had to realize? I was allowing things that I couldn't control to control me. You see, growing up, I blamed everything on my dad. I blamed everything on him. He was the reason that I skipped school. He was the reason for my attitude. He was the reason that I, I, I went to drugs. He was the reason for my suicidal thoughts. He was the reason for every destructive behavior. Like, I blamed everything on him being ripped out of my life. But you know what I had did? I had walked into this trap. I was allowing things that I couldn't control. Those situations that you didn't sign up for, you didn't want to have to deal with, it knocked, it came in front of you, and I allowed that thing that I had no say over, I allowed that to control me for so long. I was Allowing things that I couldn't control to control me and I had to realize I had to take control of what I can only control I can't control what you think what you say or how you treat me I can't always control the situations the struggles the adversities the abuses the hurts the pains that other have caused me but I can always re I can always control how I react how I respond and what I do I had to take control of me control what you can control and truthfully the first thing that I had to do which was the most difficult thing that I had to do I had to realize the anger the rage the hurt the frustration the pain that I had towards my dad I had to let it go and I was scared to let it go because I had had so much identity tied up in my wounds but I had to learn I am more than my struggle I am more than my wound I have to let it go letting it go and forgiving him didn't justify it didn't make it right for him but if a family could forgive me for taking the life of their daughter how could I continue to understand this that the anger the frustration the madness the pain that I had towards my dad it was only poisoning me and I had to let some things go and that's a challenge because for so long that pain, that wound, it really became like a safety net for me because it was my go-to. It was my reason for all of my struggles. And if I let it go, then I had to begin to face some of my other hurts and my pains. And that's intimidating and it's scary. But the truth is, when we hold on to these things, it's not poisoning the people who did it to us. It's only holding you hostage. And so, I let it go. It didn't justify it. It doesn't make it okay. It doesn't mean that me and my dad became best of best of buddies. But it allowed me to begin to continue to pursue purpose. And we all got a purpose. Every one of you in this room, you were born to leave your fingerprints on history. Every one of you in this room were born to not just exist, but to experience life. But until you let go of some of the things that you have allowed to define you for so long, you know why? Sometimes we can't change and we can't overcome the suicidal thoughts, the self-injuring mentality, our anger, our rage, our wounds, because all you have been doing for so long 
you're consumed by it. All you do is focus on it. It's everything about you and what you feed and what you focus on, what you feed grows and what you focus on magnifies. And I realized if I stopped being consumed about that, but found the courage to let it go and stop being self-absorbed, but begin to walk even while I was still wounded, begin to move towards my dream. And I realized what I give away, I get a keep. And I started looking to my friends, my peers, my community of other people with storms and struggles. And I began to recognize what gave me real worth, real passion. What helped me really overcome is this, giving what you give away, you get to keep. When I started having empathy towards my friends, being of somebody that would listen, getting involved in other people's situations and helping them. Why does that help me? Because it took my eyes off my struggle and it put my eyes on beginning to help others. And when I helped others, it gave me real self-worth real self-value. That bad break is not how your story ends. The loss, the sickness, the injustice is not going to limit the rest of your life. God said in Isaiah, He will pay you back double for the unfair things that have happened. If you're going to see the double, you have to know that God is going to make it up to you. It may be unfair, but God is a just God. He saw what happened. He knows who hurt you what you lost, what you're struggling with. He's not going to just bring you out. He's going to bring you out better. Get rid of that victim mentality. Quit dwelling on who hurt you, what you lost. You're not a victim. God always causes you to triumph. That bad break wasn't fair. You didn't like it, but what you can't see is it set you up for double. That boss that overlooked you, you didn't get the credit. You could feel like a victim. No, get ready. God's going to make it up to you. That sets you up for promotion, increase, favor that you wouldn't have seen if that had not have happened. And here's the key. Nobody can make you be a victim. They can do things that are not fair. You can go through things you don't like, you don't understand, but none of that can force you to have a victim mentality. You have to give permission to become a victim. You have to make that choice. I'm at a disadvantage. This bad break has stopped my future. I'm asking you to not give permission. Victory starts in your thinking. As long as you feel like a victim, it's going to limit your destiny. You won't pray bold prayers. You won't believe for big dreams. You won't expect God's favor. No matter what's happened in your past, no matter how many generations there's been dysfunction, abuse, lack, struggle, you're the generation that's going to set a new standard. You're the one that's going to see this shift in your thinking. We're not slaves. We're not victims, limited, at a disadvantage. We are children of the Most High God. No more forever the victim. No more I always get bad breaks. It's just my luck. No more my family has always struggled. It's just who we are. God is doing a new thing. Now do your part and put on those new clothes, so to speak. See yourself differently. Have a new perspective. You're not a victim of your past, a victim of who went before you, a victim of what didn't work out. You are a victor. God is about to release freedom, wholeness, abundance, favor like you've never seen. You've been raised up for such a time as this to make a difference, to take your family to a new level.